everyone. Welcome back once again to the Iconist Podcast. Like usual, I'm one of your hosts on this exciting show. My name is Barry3D Carter for Deep Dark Delicious. Here we go. You want to find where I'm at? Go to Barry3D.com. Find all the links where I'm going to be performing live comedy or what we do next. And on my side, as always, the man, the myth, the legend, as I said, he was a transformer. He would be a subwoofer. He would be a boom box. This man would be more powerful than an iPod with speakers 12 feet tall. Talking about my cousin, the one and only. Mm -hmm. Rod C. Good day. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good luck. You look at you wonderful people out there. How y'all doing? How y'all <laughs> Welcome to another episode of this place they call the Icon S is. You know me. Gotta call it down because we're not gonna tell you just yet. No, why is that? Because our parents raised us right, and we got to do what we got to do. And what I mean by that, you got to give thanks and praise to the ones that support the show. So the people who sponsor the show, support the show, here we go. Mm. Remember, support the books to keep the books alive, to keep the show alive, to keep all the media alive. And to support the books, the best way to do that is to go to your normal, your local comic book store. So you got to go down to West at WoW Comics Mm. out in Kitchener and tell them we said hi. And if you're out in Montreal to our friends out there, check out Check Swings. Walk in there and tell Trevor and the guys we said hi. You know, and they, they will be very happy to help you out and find any books that you want to read and, and, and keep it going. You know, you bring your kids in there. Now, I'm not even being sarcastic or cracking jokes. Start them from young. We started from young and look at our passion today. Growing and strong. A lot right? of paper cuts. Ooh, yeah, lots of paper lot of cuts. cuts. Uh, on top of that, as I said, I do a lot of stand-up comedy all over, and I do that with the comedy troupe I'm a part of, and that is A Touch of Grey Matter. We have a show coming up at Stonehookers Brewery in Mississauga on April 14th. It will be myself, Barry Carter, along with Zolf Ali, Dave Sakalowski, and special guest Larry Smith. Whoa. Let's go. Come out, support, have some laughs. It's all going to be a great time overall. April 14th show kicks off at 8, 8 p.m. If I remember right, uh, we're going to have it's 7 or 8 p.m. I'll, I'll, the poster's up. You're seeing it. Mm. And on top of that, uh, another person who started supporting the show, and she's been on um, our Touch of Grey Matter YouTube channel, and you can find that channel through this channel, is Brandy Ford. So she is a writer, a podcaster. She's an interviewer, a photographer, and she's doing comedy herself. And she's now started her latest venture, which is her own magazine called The Writer and The Wit. I love it. Uh, You look in there for us. You'll see some uh, stuff in there about us uh, with links down below. So that's what it is. Support the magazine. Subscribe. Get it mailed out. Uh, I think she's doing a having, you know, if you subscribe, you can get it mailed out to your house. And it's not just comedy. It's not just podcasts. It's a lot of great stuff. And she's really got her pulse on the, uh, her finger on the pulse as the saying goes. So that's Brandy Ford with the writer and the wit magazine. Keep your eyes peeled. Issue number one actually will be out uh, in time for our April 14th show. So she's also going to be having those on site. Nice. She might, very possibly she'll be there. So support, support, support. And as always, the man who's designed the touch of gray um, backdrops and all that. The one who does our backdrops. If you have anything that you want to do from virtual to live and you need any type of graphic design art for the project that you're doing or business that you're launching or you want to update what you have to give it a little bit more pop, pizzazz, as what man would do it in, you know, the fifth element. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. It's got a pop, it's got a pizzazz. Come on, Corbin, Corbin, Corbin. My man, Corbin. Uh, you need to reach out to the one and only. And who am I talking about, Rod? J Bird Digital Art. Art, 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 art. Jason Reese at J Bird Digital Art. He'll hook you up like he's hooked us up. And if you mentioned that you've heard about him on the Iconist podcast, he will give you a discount. Now, let's keep in mind, we know we have listeners in Canada in the states mm-hmm. overseas mm-hmm. in the uk in france uh that's the beauty of the world we live in you don't have to be local to have support the business reach out to him he reach will, he will send it all to you he gets the files to you okay that's right now that we got the housekeeping out the way 
Here we go. You seen the name? You're going, huh? We think we know, Barry. And you might know, but we will get down to what we do, the grassroots, the origin, the, the birthing, and at the beginning of this character. And today we are talking about Firestorm! Firestorm by DC Comics Woo. made his first appearance in March of 1978. Mm. Yes, he was created by two people. He, he his yeah. that was his first appearance. He was created by Jerry Conway. Thank you very much, Jerry Conway and Al Milgrom. See, I'm bad with names. So that's why I let Rod do it this time. <laughs> And the beauty about Firestorm is Firestorm is one of the unique characters where it wasn't just one person mm -hmm. that makes up Firestorm. If you don't know, it's two. You're going to learn today. You won't learn today. today, which is funny because to me, Firestorm should be a Gemini. Okay, break it in. You know, please. Sign of the twins. Figured it. Figured it. Two Figured people. It. Figured it. Right, out, right. He, he's just... got two personalities. They always say Gemini's got two personalities. You know what? And I think I have a great insight on Gemini's. You know why? Because I'm a Gemini. No, I saw it coming. I saw it. <laughs> I don't know if you all saw it, but I saw it. I just I like look at it. Look at him. 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 Look. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him. Yeah. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Yeah, that's right. Look, 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 look at this. Look at this. All right. I'm a Gemini, and I understand Gemini's because I am one. I've been one for many, many, many years. And being a Gemini a is moon. awesome. Now, people that have to deal with a Gemini, you don't know what side you're getting with at times. Um, I think I'm more balanced as a Gemini. Maybe not, but it is what it is. And you know, I I'll say this the beauty of it is my birthday falls on June 14th. Okay, good. All right. Not that I want any presents, but if you got some, hey, I'm good. The biggest present you can do is like, subscribe, and share, rate, and review this show. That would be what I would love for this to happen on June 14th. And of course, uh, we have our Patreon page, we got a coffee page. So if you want to do a one time subscription, uh, you know, support or, or, or monthly, we appreciate that too. Help the channel grow. Now, oh, the reason yeah, I was mentioning June 14th, not because so much it was my birthday, but I'll make this tidbit before we get more into Firestorm. I was following one of my favorite artists I like on social media, right? Uh, you know, they call him Matt, Joel, Joel Madura. And and I, if I mispronounced the last name. And he had this book that I absolutely loved back in the day. The book was called Battle Chasers. Battle Chasers ran for just a few issues. The art, loved his art style. Very dynamic. And then Joel got into video game designing. He started working with video game magazines, doing covers, doing pictures. And he was doing his work. And then he came up with a game with the same name, Battle Chasers. I played it, loved it. It was a role-playing, turn-based game. Graphics, the art style represented everything he did under his company. Uh, that's how much of a supporter I am. And then he turned around and he mentioned on his media, lo and behold... Uh, guess what? He's continuing the series. And the next issue comes out on June 14th. For any of you who follow me on social media, or when I say follow me, I'm not, it's not about me. If you follow us mm -hmm. on social media under the Iconist podcast, um, uh, you would see that I posted it, that this book comes out 20 it was it like 20 or 23 years after the last issue? It was has been immediate, the longest wait between issues. But here's the thing. I ain't mad. I ain't mad. Because I'm going to go to the comic book store and I'm going to buy a copy. I buy a copy. I might buy two because I'm a Gemini and I need one to read and one to keep preserved. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's the way it goes. So here, here we go. So we're not to get more off topic. That's all I'm saying is this is why I think Firestorm should be a Gemini because great things happen and weird things happen when Geminis are afoot. I'm not saying anyone else is a Gemini, but that's where it comes down to. So Firestorm was made out of two people, right? As I said, Jerry Conway. So Jerry and Al turned around, got together and said, we need to make a hero. Back in 1978, mm -hmm. came up with Firestorm. Issue number one. Issue number one cover price at the time was 35 cents. 35 Yay! cents for a comic book. Oh, how we would love to have 35 cents comic book days and, you know, 68 cents for gas prices, but not today. That's the way it's gone long ago. Now, I know this character was featured on the CW show Arrow, uh, sorry, Flash, 
in the CW yeah. in the Arrowverse. He was on Flash. Ronnie Raymond was there, and he was a fiance of Caitlin Snow. Let it snow, let, um, you know. And Doctor Robert Stein was there. And then they kind of segue into their second version of them where Robbie was dead and Stein teamed up with um, the other guy, I think it was Jason. Jack, Jack, Jax, Jax. Jax. And they formed Firestorm, the Firestorm Matrix. And they were on the show DC uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. First of all, the character is interesting. But on the bad part, they didn't get enough into it. So this is what we're going to do. So as I said, this character was made back in 1978, came out issue one. And it's funny, volume one, you know, only ran for a few issues. Mm -hmm. It didn't last that long. If I'm right, it, it only ran like what five issues before it got canceled. Which, which is uh, yeah, yeah, only five, only five issues, only and five. it got canceled. So, if why are we talking about it? Well, his goals. It's he's he was Firestorm, the Nuclear Man. Yeah, well, well, back in the you know seventy eight. Come on, it's all about you know nuclear power, cold Fusion. wars, and kung fu. Fusion. Let's fuse them together. Okay, cool. That's right, okay. Rod. He was he was Dragon Ball before Dragon Ball. No, oh, I will hold that one in. <laughs> one in. Very nice segue. Very nice segue. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dragon Ball before Dragon Ball. You hear me? That fusion, that fusion. Okay, so he ran for five issues. And the reason it ran for five issues is because at the time there was, uh, you know, DC Comics, comic books had a, a, an issue, but DC pretty much went ugh, bankrupt. Right. And to, to save what they were doing, they, they canceled a lot of books. They had a whole initiative of starting a whole lot of new IPs, and then they had to cancel it to save money. People lost their jobs. It was bad. It was rough. So, I mean, if you're looking at that time, you know, that's Hawk and Dove. I think that was part of that. And I got caught up in that. It yeah, was, you know, a DC yeah. showcase was uh, that even though it ran for a long time, it, it would probably kept going, but it got cut with that firestorm. And there's a whole slew of books, Black Lightning. All of them just said, can't do it. Hawkman, you know, at one point in one of his volumes, Ugh. Cut, 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 cut. And they kept the main ones. So they kept, you know, your Batmans, your Supermans, your Wonder Womans. And even then they they lost some titles because uh, Batman had a lot of titles. Superman had a lot of titles. Mm -hmm. So they really trimmed down what it was to keep DC alive at that time. So this is why it only ran. They had big plans, but it, it ran only for five issues. But he did come back in different volumes, starting him again and different storylines and arcs. We're just going with the original one. So we're just going to touch on the five uh, issues. And once again, it was very, number one was a very dynamic cover. He's flying out. Is a, you see the a Firestorm Matrix beside it, behind him. It, mm -hmm. It's like a nuclear blast happening with atoms all around it. It had a certain look. And you see Ronnie and Dr. Stein in there. And you see Firestorm flying out of the cover. A lot of color in there with his costume being yellow, a mix of yellow and orange and uh, some hints of red. And his hair, he didn't have hair. It was just fire where his head should be. And he had no irises in his eyes. It was just whites. But powerful. So I was excited when I saw him in the Arrowverse on Flash when, you know, when he first came out. And I was like, of course, they changed it. But they did keep some of the basic elements that was still recognizable as the name of the characters who, who merged to form him. And even the Firestorm Matrix, they mentioned that. And then Robbie had to put his thing on his chest that made Firestorm's like insignia. Where it was like you know on his upper right chest and it had like the three prongs that went across that would extend yeah. and okay they gave him the powers but you know Robbie was in jeans and a black jacket no but we understand it was a TV show budget here we are so, uh, what, what do you think of Firestorm in general Rod and we'll start breaking him down a oh, little bit no 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 problem listen in general I like the character I've always liked the character I, I was the same way in the early days when I was when I was reading it. Um, I've got into Firestorm late. Mm -hmm. Someone kind of told me about it. Um, could have even been you. Honestly, it could have definitely been you. Because uh, you were really more my, my comic uh, go-to guy back in the days. Thank you. <laughs> did. I read a lot. <laughs> yeah. And you had a lot at your house. But anyway, so, so that, <laughs> that one got me in. Not got me in. But I did like, I did like the understanding of the fusion. I, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that you really think about it at this time of, this time, even now, even then, you had people who 
because of some type of circumstance, they turned into something, something turned in, and it was always that individual, one same individual, maybe, maybe a Jekyll and Hyde type of scenario, well, you know, it yeah. normally would be, you know, the kind of scenario. But this is one of the rarities I remember even at the time, and even that I'm trying to even, I was even just trying to search it just to refresh my memory. Were there any other characters where they had two, two, two physical bodies fused into one? I could not recall that. So the whole concept was very unique and very different. And I liked it. I liked the whole concept about how his power. So we'll get into that and, you know, what he has the ability to do and everything along, along that line. But having during, like Barry said, during that time of those nuclear fusion, nuclear power was one of the main, the way, the main go-to points to how are we going to create a character? What are we going to, you know, what are the powers? Whatever, what could have, what could have created that person's powers? You know what? Everybody's worrying about, you know, nuclear fusion, you know, nuclear, you know, powers and all that, you know, Gorbachev, Three Mile you know, Island, Chernobyl. Exactly. So, so it was, it was a perfect segue that they were able to, to break that into normal, um, you know, just into the normal comic world of just kind of bringing that type of dynamic, real life dynamic into the, into uh con- continuum. Yeah. Words, like I'm saying. Yeah. It, 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 and I find that really interesting. So this is, and that's your point. To your point, I agree with you the same thing. I've never seen two characters merge to form one. It was like, we've seen giant robots do it. Um, we've seen people turn into things like, you know, Bruce Banner, the Incredible Hulk, for example. Right. Uh, and it goes on that way. But I've never seen two characters merge. And this is why it stands out to me. And this is why I make that Dragon Ball crack. Because that's that's one of the other times I've noticed it. That really was memorable to me. So the whole story is, you have Ronnie, and it takes place at a high school. So you have Ronnie Raymond, you know, go to Ronnie, transfers to a high school. He's a football player, so he's a jock. But he's, mm-hmm. a, he's a jock in a new school, and he's trying to make an impression. So he doesn't know where he's going to go and what he's going to do. And walking around the first day, you see, you're trying to find your clique, who you always fit in with. And any right. person that, you know, let's put it, all of us, not any person, all of us, regardless of age, have had the experience of being, the you know, new at a new school be it if you're going to daycare for the first time the first time you're going to elementary school first time you're going to high school and mm-hmm. i think that's really the formative year so now and then sometimes your parents move around and you go to a different school so you might have your click and then you move away for whatever reasons and some right. people handle it better than others ronnie overall seemed he was fine with it he was you know got moved to a different high school so it wasn't like he was starting high school the first day it's just that he moved to a different city whatever the usual trope of oh it's for work or whatever case be his parents moved he's uh in there so he understands subconsciously you always understand the hierarchy of it Uh, subconsciously you always look for people who have your interest to form those new friend friendship bonds and in that school he's looking for anyone that's into sports because that's what he plays that's what he he's comfortable with Right. For myself, when I went into school, it was like, all right, who's into the anime and who's into the Dungeons and Dragons and who's into comic books? So, I, those are people I would draw to. But then on top of it, I was also drawn to people with music. So if anyone's performing music, DJs, uh, dancers, because I was a dancer myself. So those are the clicks I would look for. Comedy. Okay. So, I, you know, you have different facets, but his was really football. And that makes a lot of sense. And I'll get more into it. So he's into football. He goes in there. He sees some guys outside playing. And he kind of starts talking to them. Now, the thing is, he's not hes not bad at football. He's really good at football. He, he, he was a star at his old school, and he's trying to get in there. Now, mm-hmm. what happens is when you have a pack of lions and you have a, a lone lion coming in, there's always going to be a battle of two alphas for who's going to take over the pride. Right. So that's exactly what it was. Roddy came over. Roddy knows how good he is. He's not conceited. He just knows how good he is. Yeah. And he didn't come in there with a big head. He's at a new school. So he's coming in very humble. He sees some guys playing football. And he's like, hey, can I play a game with you guys? And it's out in the yard. So it's not even an official football game. It's just like a pickup game that they're just doing in between Mm -hmm. classes. Um, And he's like, okay, getting in there. And he starts talking to some of the guys. Now he's still looking around and trying to feel his way in. And he sees this one girl that catches his eyes. And it's like, okay, you're a teenager. Obviously, you're in a new town. He he wants to date, <laughs> so he sees his girl. So he starts talking to her, and then he wants to impress her by saying, "Like, look how good I'm at football." We've all had that moment. That's the man trying to be the rooster in the hen house. All right. So he goes and he does that. Now, when he does that, one of the other guys who was, you know, the big shot there, mm-hmm. realizes, "Hey, Ronnie's talking to this girl. Oh, Ronnie's trying to impress her. I'm gonna pull a Lucy yeah. Charlie Brown style." 
and yank the football. So he goes flying and lands on his back and ha ha ha. And this guy becomes his high school nemesis, his high school bully. He's the mm-hmm. one that picks on Ronnie all the time, tries to put him down because he wants to make him look bad in front of the girl. Now, I don't know if he liked that girl also or what it was. And, you know, when, and that's something you can always play into. There's a storyline that can be there. Mm-hmm. But that was him was like, oh, he's not showing me up. There you go. So it was two alphas, and that's how it came in to be, and unintentionally. Mm-hmm. I like that writing aspect. It was, to me, it was relatable. Okay, so now Ronnie feels like he looks like a fool, but he wants to impress this girl. And he's like, what can I do to get her to really pay more attention to me? And you always hear is like, well, you know, like in Hank Hill would say to Bobby Hill, I'm like, son, what you want to do is if you've got to, if you want to find a girl, you want to find a girl, find a girl you like. Then find the what she's interested in and and become passionate about what she's interested in and then go from there. Find you know, find a girl what she likes. And if you like what she does, then the two you can become passionate about it together. He's not saying to fake it, he's just saying, fine. That's what Hank was right. saying. Find common ground and really use that as your your catapult to get you in there. And Bobby Hill in that episode ends up start causing a school walkout. <laughs> and the students walk out downtown and it almost caused a riot. In Ronnie's case, she was very anti-nuclear war. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned before, this was written with the mindset of Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, nuclear radiation, nuclear is bad. So she, and I can't remember her name, but she was going to be part of this protest for nuclear power. Doreen. Doreen, thank you. So turn around and he's like, okay, I'm jumping on board. Anti-nuclear power, I'm with you. And he got his sign, and they went down there to protest at the plant. They break in at the plant at some point, and things progress. And at the same time, his professor, who was there at the school, was at the nuclear parent because he's a professor, and he wants to learn so he can teach. And an accident happens, an explosion happens, and Ronnie runs in there to save the professor. Now, at this point, people are running for their lives. The professor is unconscious. Ronnie's grabbed him. He's trying to run to get him out there to save his life. Boom, boom, boom. Explosion. And famous words, Rod. Ray, Ray, Ray. <laughs> and here we are. And all of a sudden, you know, smoke starts to clear. And Ronnie stands up, butt naked, looking at himself. No clothes. I mean, butt naked. Hair's on fire. No irises in his hands. Hands seem to be having like, some energy around them. And he's like, what's going on? Where's the professor? And it's like, he comes to the realization when he's thankfully survived, he's looking mm-hmm. at himself going, what happened? And then he's just thinking about clothes and he gives himself the firestorm outfit and he tries to run away and he ends up flying. And then all of a sudden he hears a voice in his head. Now, I love how they depicted this all the time in the comic. Even in the times you see firestorm make appearances on the uh, like Justice League action. You always see this astral head over him and it's just a head yep. and it's the yep. professor and the professor is like hey ronnie what's going on now because the reason you know ronnie has so firestorm is the body of ronnie with ronnie's mind but he has the professor there as a backup where he can have full of conversations not a hallucination it's the right. professor's body and ronnie's body merged but the professor was unconscious ronnie was uh, wide awake, so that's why Ronnie got control of the Firestorm Matrix, but the professor, because they're merged, he has the professor's conscious, they're talking to him. Not like a ghost or anything like that, like full out two people talking like how me and Rod are talking. Well, I'm doing a lot of talking and Rod's going to talk about it soon enough. It's just like, that's it's exactly like exactly Jiminy Cricket. It <laughs> that's basically it. The professor basically was his conscious, was his was his Jiminy Cricket. That's the, that's a nice way of thinking of it, without <laughs> the, the scratching and the, the cricking of the, the, the cricket heels and that kind of stuff. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, Disney plug. Uh, yes. Yeah. And that there is the birth of Firestorm. So mm-hmm. when you're looking at that, here's here's a deal. You got the body of a high school student. And I would say really good to peak physical condition mm-hmm. because he's a football star. And Ronnie, I mean, he was like six foot one, six foot two, 202 pounds. That's Ronnie. Right. So, all right, and he's a high school student. He got, and then you have the professor in his head, and the professor, even though he's a teacher, 
is also a professor and he, and he he teaches things, but his specialty is nuclear power. Okay, let's break this down. Ronnie might not know about what molecule is what molecule and nuclear bonding is, but the professor does. And the professor is the ultimate co-pilot to say, hey, try this with your powers. And of course, right. Ronnie would try it. And then Ronnie would come up with his own ways and inadvertently come up with something with a professor. Like, oh, I didn't think about that. Oh, we can do that. We can do this. So, too close, to, too close to the for, too close to the woods, the trees to see the forest. Yes, that could be that could be the professor in that particular time. Yes, absolutely. So this brings out Firestorm. Now, Firestorm, as I said, he's got a, an array of powers. Right, an array of powers. Clearly, he's got the power. You know, so he's got. Let's give you a breakdown here. He's got superhuman strength, endurance, speed, durability, senses, self-sustain. So he doesn't need to eat to keep up going. He doesn't really feel fatigue. Okay. Um, and, you know, he's got nucleosis and psych- psychoconesis or whatever and nuclear pyrokinesis. So he's got, you know, he can deal with nuclear powers, pyrotechnic powers, or so really nuclear energy, fire. He's got all that. He's got regeneration. Regeneration. So we get to he covers pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. And the one I like the most is like density control. Right? Density control. So let's put it this way. I know we've done a lot of DC lately, and I'm gonna do a Marvel shout out. If you took the vision from the Avengers <laughs> and nice. you combined him with Molecule Man from the Marvel yeah. Universe, right? You got Firestorm. Right. So Firestorm can literally make his body intangible so objects go through him he can phase through solid objects he can phase through yep he can make himself heavier he can make himself lighter okay uh you know he's got a what is it eldic memory uh you know probably more of his later on versions going on but he's he and he's got transmutation and total conversion over inanimate objects but when i'll say and i and i say that loosely Mm-hmm. Meaning he can turn anything into anything else because he sees it down to the molecule level. So he can turn around and turn a brick into a plastic flower. Cool. Keep in mind what I said, plastic flower, not a real flower. He can turn wood into steel and vice versa. Right. So anything he's organic. Got, yeah. So anything Maybe. organic, he doesn't have the ability to do, if I remember correctly. Nothing organic because they didn't give him, they, they gave him, but they didn't say organic. Yes. But they say, you know, okay, he's got molecule reconstruction. I'll say, Mm -hmm. I'll get back with this air quotes, you know, and it's always interpretation of who was writing it at the time. But originally he had no, he couldn't do anything organic, but anything inorganic, he can rearrange to whatever he needed to be. So if someone's falling out the sky, he could turn, I don't know, concrete into styrofoam, something soft for them to land into, right? Because it's inorganic, concrete, it's, it's inorganic. I wouldn't say grass. And he had some good villains. So, you know, one of his main villains was Killer Frost. So Killer Frost making her appearance on The Flash and how they separated, say she came from a different universe, but had a love interest. You know, you could see if you look, knowing the history of Firestorm, and then you look at the actress that played, you know, Caitlin, and then she played uh, Killer Frost in her first time when she showed up. She was more of a villain, then they softened her out. And, of course, her her character being engaged to Robbie on on Flash you get the killer frost firestorm thing fire and ice here we go once again right. Right. you know we just did our episode fire and ice but it's a different version of it so that was his main villain and uh sorry his main villain was killer frost villain love interest so just like batman had Catwoman, firestorm mm-hmm. had killer ice i'm sorry killer frost Kill frost yep they like the bad women <laughs> so this is where it came into five issues now in it he does eventually join the Justice League at one point, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll say this and I'll let you say your point, Rod, we'll get more into it. There's a couple of storylines I think that we've overlooked or, or maybe fans never really thought of. And I'm going to put it out there. One storyline is if you got someone who's a high school student and he's got, you know, the teacher there, mm-hmm. I, 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 you know, I, I've always thought that Firestorm would get along really well with Billy Batson, Captain Marvel, even though yeah. Billy Batson's a little bit younger than a high school student or he's maybe right. they're, they're the closest of age on the mm-hmm. Justice League. <laughs> right. 
hundred percent, hundred percent. Like I, it's funny. Like I was gonna come back to to a Captain Marvel, uh, uh, try to make some type of connection. In my mind, mm-hmm. I was even thinking along the line that when this was created, Captain Marvel was already it was already established IP. He was already there along yep. that line. But again, he was Billy Baxton as a 10, 11 year old. Now we're now having, uh, we're having like the inverse of that in that sense where you have the mind of a child, the body of, of, of a full adult, like a God kind of scenario. Now you see with Firestorm, it's like, I'm not saying that the reverse, you now have the mind of an adult at the other end of the spectrum and you have the body of not a child, but a, of a of a very an older teenager. Yes. you know what I mean. Like he's in high school along that line. So I had always seen that that sim that that du- reverse mirror duality in the sense of how they had it played out. Mm-hmm. Now again, the first character that they have that have a, a dual personality, you know, be able to speak and connect to each other was to me was genius. It was a nice way of trying to show that you know people have. They had the yin and yang, and they definitely played out that particular spectrum very well in Firestorm because you always had Ronnie who would be, although he's in Firestorm mode, mm-hmm. he still thinks like a child. Of course, he's or, a teenager. Are you still, he's still, sorry, he still thinks as a teenager, so he still, he still want to do teenager things. But then you have, you know, the uh, responsible Professor Stern in the back of his mind. No, 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 no. Ron, <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronald. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Exactly all right. what it is. And, and and that was it. And it was perfect because you want to have you want to show the, the 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 range of having a teenager. What would a teenager do? It's one of those things. We've always asked ourselves, if I had the power of flight, what would I do? If I had the power of strength, what would I do? If I had this type of ability, what would I do? Now mm-hmm. you have an individual who basically has is so close to having everything all at once as a bit the flight strength now again he's not as strong as superman type of scenario but he is still a very strong individual and he has the ability to control his density and everything like that so he can be stronger than the average bear so that 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 that'll basically you know some of the some of the criteria of the abilities that that firestorm had it was um it was unique and i loved also the fact of having him pushing himself and it's kind of i may be jumping a couple places again we're going from the early first the first of the first five episodes but at least given the totality of who firestorm firestorm is this is where like barry was saying if we had the ability to to get into that lore a little bit deeper you will see there are certain times that ronnie basically had to challenge himself to be a better person because he realized with great power come great responsibility and realized yeah. he, it made him a better person. So I had liked how they have always been able to touch that um, back in the days and just giving that type of criteria of like saying, okay, you're a young teenager. You have the powers of a God per se, which is basically you can turn just about anything into anything. And who can stop you? Who can no. stop you? You, you got, you got, you, you got, you got the Jiminy Cricket. Floating in the back of your head like Professor X, whispering it, R- Ronnie, R- 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 Ronald. No, like, <laughs> like Ronald. All right, all right, prof, prof, prof. Okay, prof, professor. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. All right. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's it. But this is where it would definitely have been um, great. But I know that, like in the the coming years afterwards, you know, they they gone into the lore and everything like that, and they delve into it. But it's it's a great it's a great viewpoint of having someone who has basically, as they said, a firestorm matrix, have, you know, have the ability to do whatever he can do. It's, it's cool. Uh, and sometimes you, I'm trying to, I'm honestly trying to, oh, I'm just going to another lore. I'm trying to remember if they've ever did a reverse. I'm dead sure I've, I've seen that. I'm dead sure I've seen at least where something happened where they reversed it, that Ronnie was the, I could be wrong. But if not, that'll be oh, something. Oh yeah, yeah, that was more later on in the volumes, right? Right. That's right, what I'm right. saying. That's later in the volumes. But yeah, I mean, that, that was like volume three, or they got to that something. with fire. Right, Force. exactly. Right. But so, again, but it just gives you that the ability that you know at least is something that you can put a pin in and say, you know, what if some happening in reverse? You do a reverse quantum leap, and Al is now the body, and and Sam is the um, 
It's a hologram. Yeah. Uh? Uh, <laughs> watch your quantum leap, people. Watch the quantum leap. Watch. You saw the leap there. You saw the leap in. I saw the yeah. leap. I saw. I should have seen that. I saw the tunnel come. I was like, okay, here we go. So yeah. I agree with you, and that's that's what I think. I think one. I think that. Firestorm and Shazam should have teamed up a long time ago. Yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. in and out of costume. So I, that there would have been a cool dynamic. Um, mm-hmm. If they ever had to do a crossover with Marvel, I think that it would be Firestorm and Nova, for example. Right? Richard Ryder Nova at, at his peak power level with Firestorm as a Marvel. It would be an interesting um, crossover with Marvel and DC. And then even going back to what you're saying about your point there with Superman. I mean, look, Superman's weakness is kryptonite. It's a rock. Yeah. Hey, Firestorm, can you do me a favor and just turn that to lead? Yeah, no problem. Okay, we're good. So, 100%. The, these 100%. are your adventures. So, what now, even though it's five issues, those five issues have given us so much. What we ner- mm-hmm. learn is we got the Firestorm Matrix, you got Ronald, you got the Professor. They turn around, they merge, they form Firestorm. Okay. The thing is, though, when they first merged as Firestorm, the Professor was what? Unconscious. Right. So the first time they merge, the person pops up and says, hey, what's going on? Da, da, da. And, you know, they figure it out really quick. They go about, do what they got to do. When they split, because, mm-hmm. you know, when they split, it always seemed that Ronnie had the control to say when they turned into Firestorm. And then the professor would always show up and he they would split and professor would wake up and he's like, where am I? What's wow. happening? No clue. No, no clue. clue no clue whatsoever. And at first, Roddy would make excuses saying, oh, this happened and I did this because he didn't want to tell the professor what was going on. And the professor had no recollection as their adventures as Firestorm. Mm-hmm. So no matter what, if Ronnie saw it and said, Firestorm, and they merge, the professor is like, okay, here I am again. ba 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 Okay. Unmerge. And then the professor is like, why am I at a coffee shop? I thought I was at the school. What happened? Uh... So at one point, Ronnie does turn around and open up the professor and lets the professor know Without merging, he says, hey, you know that hero you're hearing about in Firestorm? Yeah, that's us. And what I mean by us, this is what happened. You were unconscious. I was trying to get you out. Gave him the whole origin story. So Mm -hmm. this is why the professor doesn't have control over the Firestorm Matrix. Right. Now, the professor at first was kind of remembering bits and pieces. And then, you know, eventually he remembers everything. So even though he was unconscious, he remembers everything. So then at one point, he does understand that when they turned him a firestorm and when they uh split he remembers mm-hmm. all the adventures they have right unlike before where it was like total like what's going on so that's one now the other thing the change was was when the sound that the professor is now aware he is half a firestorm he too now has control of the firestorm matrix and he can initiate the change but it is always ronnie's body so they the two of them always had to be aware of what they were the other one was doing or where they're at not to make it awkward. You don't want Ronnie out on a date and there's like, Firestorm! Hey, what, what? Anyone see Ronnie who's sitting right beside me in the movie theater? And he's gone. Ooh. It's like, Professor, what have you done to me? Sorry, we're needed. Now, keep in mind, this is 1978. So what did we not have in 1978? Oh, right. We didn't have cell phones in 1978 because <laughs> how easy would it be if me and Rod were Firestorm and something was breaking down, Rod would at least send me a text for us to say, hey, cuz, what's going on? There's a, a building yeah. on fire and we have to go and save people. What are you doing? Yeah. I'd be texting back. It's like, hey, man, hey, Rod, give me five minutes to get dressed. I was in the shower because right. you don't want to merge as Firestorm, fight crime, and then unmerge because when you unmerge, you're just there together at that present location, and he'd be yeah. dressed, and I'd be butt naked. Right. What you came into is how you leave back out. And it was like, mm-hmm. I, I was putting on one sock, and bam, come back with one sock. Dang it. You know? It, exactly. I had a bowl of chili, and I was just like, oh. <laughs> so <laughs> let your imagination go with it as well. It's just jokes. But that's exactly what it is. They didn't have that. So they had to really be very uh, – aware of what was going on in each other's lives and now it started a friendship for the two of them which was cool once again that's another story that could play off ron always played as a jock now that i know they went and the professor was always the professor as comic tropes with you know Mm -hmm. uh uh, I mean, that's a show, but I mean comic book tropes it's a comic book trope it's a trope right there that would happen what i would love to see is some some cross sharing learning ronnie You're a jock. We get that. But you're hanging out with a professor who understands nuclear power. He's a teacher at your high school. Mm -hmm. Subconsciously, 
whatever it, because their memories merge they know what the other one knows to a certain degree and they still talk i would like to have seen ronnie take on more of like hey ronnie likes football but he seems to be really doing better in science what's going on right and some professor- residual effects some residual effects are just exactly staying in him no i fully understand what you're saying that makes sense yeah and and vice versa too right i'm not saying the professor can get out there and start throwing around football but a professor might turn around and say, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah the professor's like hmm I, I got an urge to go to the gym, start working out, right? Something along those lines. Maybe something that even as simple as, yeah, I go through life pretty serious. You told me I should, I see why I should lighten up a little bit, enjoy life a little bit more. And right. that would impact not them as Firestorm, but that would impact anyone the around their social circles, be it girlfriends, wives, and, and family. Co-workers and, them, and everything like that. Oh, completely. Yeah, and, and I think DC Legends Tomorrow handled that part of it a little bit better. Than mm-hmm. the comic book, but keep in mind, I'm not criticizing it. It only ran for five issues, the original volume, so it was limited amount of time. Now, of course, here's another thing um, they did touch on when he joined the Justice League was Captain Adam. I know it was a, it was like I think Crisis of Infinite Earths or whatever, and it was a storyline with Captain Adam. So at first, Firestorm was didn't like Captain Adam, but his powers are all like you know nuclear based too. So they're two heroes, and Firestorm just didn't like him. Just as I said, two lions, alphas, mm-hmm. right? And it's now you got a high school student merged with a professor, mm-hmm. not liking someone from the military with powers both nuclear based, right? And then later on they go through it, and then it's like, well, I didn't like him at first, but now I like him and I respect him, and I look up to him as a hero. And Captain Adam was helping Firestorm even still learn because he's seeing a different frame of mind. Mm-hmm. Once again, that's a crossover should happen. That's a that's a fight that should have happened. That's a crossover that should have happened, and that should have been that that was like a wrestling storyline. If you look back at John Cena versus Dwayne Johnson, and they did that storyline for two years, we came back and they were at each other. And at one point, at first, it was some of it was scripted, mm-hmm. and a lot of it was real. They were taking mm-hmm. real shots on each other, um, yeah. you know. And it was real animosity. And then at one point it got year one and they're like, oh, John. And even John Cena, if you watch it, you know, he turns out, yeah, I had a a, a frame of mind how I wanted to work it. I just didn't let Dwayne know. I should have let Dwayne know. And this would have taken away some of the tension behind stage. And I should have understood where he was coming from because I could have learned from him because like him or not, regardless of what people say, he is a big Hollywood star. He went from, you know, seven dollars in his pocket, sleeping right. on a used mattress in Canada, to be part of the, uh, the, you know, the Canadian Football League, the CFL, to now pulling in twenty million a picture. Regardless of what you think of Black Adam, I loved it. You know, I know people are going to make these things, and you know, when you get to high, they want to bring you down. But that's where he is right now. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Facts is facts. It's on paper. And I think that's the storyline I would have liked to see from uh, Firestorm and Captain Adam. So I know Firestorm later on, he does go through changes. He does go through becoming the fire elemental in the DC universe. And I wasn't keen on that one. I know uh, at one point, you know, the professor uh, goes and he has to deal with getting cancer. Um, And, and, you know, and then he has his moment of merging with Ronnie saying, I want to stay with you, merge forever so we can live. I don't want to die. And that caused a lot of things. At one point, Ronnie goes and gets leukemia. Now, this is why I said before about air quotes, the fact of he can't affect anything that's organic right. because at one point he uses his power to get rid of his, you know, the professor's cancer. Okay. That's okay. He used it to get rid of the cancer mm-hmm. and Rob and, and Robbie to get, uh, sorry. Yeah. And Ronnie to get rid of his, uh, his leukemia. He, he cured himself. Right. Right. Okay. So he broke, broke it down and was able to do that. But once again, you know, it, it's like nuclear power, radiation, all right, however they did it, but he cured himself. You know, I know at one point there's different people become, get the Firestorm Matrix, and it's a different thing. And that's, you know, a, a cool volumes, but we're dealing with really the original. Right. So it brings us to this. Rod, let me ask you. Mm-hmm. If you had to turn around and, we, you know, we're going to fan cast it, and we're going to first, we're going to put in what medium we want it in, and then we're going to fan cast it. So let's go right to it. Okay. Rod. If you mm. wanted to see this property, how would you see this play out? Would you see it play out as uh, a series, streaming series, movie, cartoon, and go? 
for what okay for what firestorm abilities yes i would like i would like uh a, a movie i think i i need more than a movie so the movie wouldn't wouldn't be enough for me i, I mm. need more than a movie mm. so even if you we were trying like a three-part movie type of scenario uh i want to give him that local not say he's a local like that's a neighborhood Spider-Man, a, a, a local A team, you know, type of scenario. A person who helps out when there's need and trouble, you know, type of scenario. Let him just work on his city, stays in the city kind of scenario. Mm-hmm. So for that, he needs rolling. He needs a a rotating door of issues, a rotating door of problems to solve. Um, definitely, you know, working with the Justice League aspect of it and everything along that line. But if it's going to be, I would say. If you can't pull in the Justice League, so he's going to have to be an individual story. So it's going to be more of a cartoon, uh, either a live, but then I, I would like a live. That'll be a series. But then again, it goes back to what I was saying. For what he, the ability he has to be able to do, the budget to do that is where it's going to, he's going to eat up your budget. Yes. The cost of that is going to eat up your budget. So that's why live would be great. Movie would be great, but I need more than a one or two picture movie and the budget will get eaten up in in in, in cgi and budget and in, in, in effects mm-hmm. bring it down to a live tv show it will be the same thing so for that the only medium that's left for me then is cartoon then okay. you have the ability that you can cr- you can draw out what you want and then you can get to that nuclear type of physics you can start doing stuff he never had the ability to, to well he never had a need to or for us to focus into like microscopic type of science but it'd be like an Ant-Man type of scenario. So if he's going to cure himself, let's see him actually focusing in and changing or whatever the case to be. And do you see the, all the molecular, uh, molecular structure changing and reformat as it, versus just seeing the end result outside that the, the brick turned into a plastic container. Let's focus in and do that. It'd be, I think it'd be easier to draw that out. So I would like, I would rather have that as a cartoon type of anime. Um, it gives you that, uh, you'll give you that, wider range of freedom to express the the the, the full fundamental of his power mm-hmm. that's why i would i would go that way for that okay. because the budget the, everything else will be great if we did one live one where we did say we did one movie did one movie but you know they need the budget the budget's gonna eat you so you're gonna have to come right back so do one live <laughs> one and come back to come come right back to a cartoon and anime but you're ending up in an anime the longevity of his of his storytelling would have mm-hmm. to be done through anime. That's that's okay. how I look at. It. So you're going cartoon, okay? Cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna make this for myself. Uh, I hear your point, but I'm still going with a three picture deal. Okay. Three picture deal. First picture, classic Firestorm origin story, set up a, a good villain, uh, let that go through. Right. Movie number two, I would say, okay, you bring back classic Firestorm, obviously because that's who you established. Uh, mm-hmm. Another villain love interest show more of the home life and then break in down to the professor finding out that oh 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 no got cancer you know um would i do it that way yeah i, I would i think i would do it that way like the professor finds out he's got cancer so forth like that and then it, it causes a change within firestorm and the dynamic and how they're dealing with okay mm-hmm. right third movie Go through the whole aspect of it. Let them fight that new Firestorm who's like a, a soldier from Russia. Let him come over. Fight happens. Professor says, I can't do this no more. You bring in the um, the other guy who it was Jax or I, I can't remember his name. It wasn't Jax in the comic books, but the black guy who merges to become Firestorm. So, you know. Okay. Um, It was Jason Rock. Thank you. So yeah. let it be Ronnie, Jason, along with uh, the Firestorm Matrix and they stop that fight that main villain and then in there let's give it a happy ending professor stein's still around you know he's dealing with the whole cancer thing that's why he doesn't want to get in there let him go in there and let them uh, touch on aspects of him being the fire elemental let's talk about him getting so his power gets upgraded become the fire elemental defeating the russian version of firestorm goes back and then use his powers to save the professor from dying from cancer and then ha- give a choice of, hey, do you want to continue being Firestorm, me and you started this journey, uh, Professor, me and you? And he says, no, I'm older. 
I'm retired. I want to enjoy my family, just like they did at the CW. Right. Uh, I'm always here for you, Ronnie. You know, you're my best friend, even though we have such an age different. I'm going to live out my life. But the world needs a firestorm. And let Ronnie and Jason become the new firestorm going forward. But because they've touched on elements of him being the fire elemental, let it have like backdrops or clips, cut scenes of him meeting up with other elementals. So you bring in the swamp thing, who was the, you know, the protector of the green and, and, and start opening that storyline. So go through that arc. And then, then I would say, give me weekly adventures as a cartoon to keep the, 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 the flames going of the new right. firestorm with flashback episodes of the original, right. Or how right. they want to do it. It gives everyone, it keeps an open book. Cause I don't want to kill off anybody. I'm tired of people always dying, you know, because no. the, the heroes don't die, but if you put them in live medium, someone's got to die and they never bring them back. Uh, clearly you right. missed a spot, uh, you know, so that's what I'm going with. Okay. You know what? Okay. I, I can hear what you're saying now here. Cause my thoughts on the live aspect of it, Hearing what you're saying, I like I like what you're saying. I like what you're saying. My mm-hmm. my thoughts is thinking in regards to the villain aspect of it. Yes, we have the Russian version of him. Um, I guess I guess I'm just trying to because I'm looking for the longevity of it. Yeah. So I want to have I want to have more of the classic more, firestorm. Yeah. More of the classic firestorm, but in the sense I'm thinking like, how can you in a world? Uh, I guess the the word I'm I'm trying to say and not saying. How are you going to bring in Firestorm with with being created by the accident, nuclear accident, to create him? Mm-hmm. Is this a world that is a one-off? Like saying, look, we've never had any type of person with super abilities. And then you have this one person, now Slash 2, because you yeah, have the yes. Russian version, but he was there. And then you're going to say, technically, that's it. Are we now bringing it as a, that universe by itself? Is this a universe that you do have a Superman? So you are touching... I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to see. Like, if you're doing that, then okay, fine. But if you're, if there's no way of showing that you're actually having some other individual who can create powers, I think that's why I'm just saying, in the realm of drawing it out, the 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 believability of having someone in another town having some type of, you know, nuclear or some type of accident that created and gave him powers will be a little bit easier because it's like okay so how like are we not watching our nuclear plants that people are just getting blown up or i, I don't know so <laughs> well you know they can always tweak that right but it's still got that oh, yeah. nuclear basis at the bottom of it yeah so, yeah, 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 yeah 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 but that's how my that's how my eyes are just looking in the sense like like because at least with not at least what i did gather with josh whedon slash zach snyder's version you got batman yeah superman alien you have you have the gods from uh, for Amazons. Right. You have you know what I mean. So it had mm-hmm. those, but they built they built up for that. But at least it, it was a world where you believe that, unless we're going to infuse. I, you know what? I guess it comes back to. I guess it comes back to adding it just like Captain Marvel, because Captain Marvel, in that sense, yes, it was in the same world of Gotham and everything like that. But they mm-hmm. definitely kept it separate. But you knew there was a hint of. Others are yeah. there, of course. Others and that's fine because that's the beauty of it, right? Because every hero always has his turf. Mm-hmm. You know, you you feel you figure out the heroes and you know who's gonna guard what city. And then they right. only get together when it's a big cosmic event. So they right. generally speaking, Superman just wouldn't casually just show up. If he knows there's a hero oh, there, that hero would take care of it. He's too busy dealing with his stuff. So right. Uh, you know, and I said there's Flame Bird, you know, he's got his own cast of supporting characters that can support right. it. And of course, he, you know, uh, at the end, you do a Justice League movie, well, then they're going to do because that's a world threatening event. But when it's city, right. hey, man, as Batman always says, stay out of my city. Yeah. Oh, okay. So no, I, I get you, and I'm not knocking. I like, I, I get what you're coming from. I'm just yeah, saying yeah. that's how I envision it. No, no, completely, completely. Yeah. And, I, and I see, I see, it. see, that's why I think I can, I can, I can see it. I wasn't, I, I guess, because I wasn't going into it thinking like a three parter, mm-hmm. because I was more thinking on the aspect of creating the the world, the power, the world, but the power, the power that, that to 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 showcase the power that he can do and show that how limitless minus two days he can be. That's how close yeah. to that's how that's how I envision Fire Firestorm. Firestorm basically has the ability to. Do just about everything and even when you say just you're like 
maybe if he really thought it, he, you know, it will start to sound like the like the um like the, the remake for A Team, uh, like uh, Hannibal Smith, like give me an hour, I'm I got a plan. Give me a day, I I can make a better plan. Give me a week, I'll be unstoppable. So if Ronnie would have at least a day, like yeah, I don't know <laughs> how close he'd be, but if you really sat down and said, Professor, let's study this out. What can I really do with my powers? Yeah, this guy is like, man, he'd be like omnipotent minus two days. That's how close he is. He's just nearly right there. <laughs> to be the ultimate. All this power wrapped up into a little bottle. Genie. Genie. Yes. Okay. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> All right. So hold on. So we're going to keep the momentum going. Let's get now. Let me get to it. Right. So we're going to fan cast yeah. it. So yeah, yeah. with that being said, mm-hmm. who, who would be your pair? Who would be your Ronnie and who would be your professor? Okay. So I did say that I would at least have one live. But even if I didn't have a live, I'm going to have yeah, these yeah. two characters. No, no, no. But I'm, I'm going to mm-hmm. say who. So I'm going to have these two characters. What I wanted to do was. I was trying to even I was even trying to manipulate excuse me everyone manipulate the, the 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 power structure of Firestorm. I wanted to make it seem like when he is Ronnie mm-hmm. like you said Ronnie was a built is a was a, was a fit athlete and everything along that line and then basically he still kept that same frame. I wanted to have that basically when he was he wasn't a Captain America. No. Let's just say he was. Let's just say he was a Ronnie, like we see him in the in the comic books. But when he merged into uh, Firestorm, he was even a more powerful looking, a little taller, a little wider, a little bigger. So you can clearly kind of wonder all the things that even if you thought you looked at him and realizing that yeah, well you have the same body shape as Ronnie, your voice sounds like Ronnie. Maybe you're Ronnie, but if you looked at him realizing there's no way you Firestorm. Is Ronnie over there? Type uh-huh, of scenario. Okay. Gotcha. So I wanted to go with a character and give that type of persona. So for one, I was going with uh, where did I where did I hide that individual? Come here, I see you there, little boy. Here you go, little boy. Excuse me, mm. please forgive me. Uh, so I'll go. <laughs> so I, I think I brought this gentleman for another movie, and I can't. I mean, another movie, but a character, but I can't remember right now. But Taylor Luthen, Luthner. Mm. Taylor Luthner. It, you'll know him from. The Twilight series. Oh, Taylor Lautner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lautner, Lautner, Lautner. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, me, I'm better name. So I have him. He's my Ronnie. So he's already he's already cut and chiseled in whatever the case would be. He oh. just has a nice has a nice frame already, but mm-hmm. he's there, mm-hmm. whatever the case would be. Because in my mind, I would have. This is where the CGI comes into play, and I'm like thinking, yeah, you know what I mean? Budget cut right there. So he, Jacob. I mean, I'm sorry. Taylor Lautner. Pilot, right? t- Taylor is 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 my Ronnie, uh-huh. and I wanted to have. Uh, let's go to his name. His name is Colin. Oh, where are you? Where did I just just you know when you when you think it's moved? There he is. It got moved over. Colin Firth. Colin Firth. Oh, Colin Firth, right yes. from the Kingsman. From the Kingsman. Listen, Firth, like he already he already looked good already. I'm looking at an individual, basically, you know. Have the, the the you know let them have the you know the nice uh, pepper and salt uh, here mm-hmm. a little more a little more salt throw mm-hmm. some glasses on him which he looked wicked in Kingsman and in that particular realm throw him as a professor or listen we already I know we're we're doing from um the professors you know North America and everything like that I I will I will like this one to be with a British accent I I will like fine. to have. I would like that. I, and I would just have that that little Jiminy Cricket type of in the back. Ron? R- Ronald? Ron? Like, yo, the guy be dead. Like, Ronald will, Ronald will know never to cross. He'll get himself in so much trouble. Professor Stein and his children? Uncle Perf- <coughs> Uncle Martin? <coughs> dead. Get out. So I, those are the two characters I would have. So that's why I would like to have that. Well, once you recognize who the person is and you hear that voice and you hear who he is, even if you did that for a live show, that's right. great. But then flip it over to like a cartoon and you will hear the dynamic there. I think he did because again, Colin did great to me, uh, pairing off of um, uh, a gentleman from, from Kingsman. Yes. And, and having, having that parody, right. That, that bouncing off was great. And Taylor was great as being like, he was like, again, like the lone wolf. You said it before having that type of, 
I am the alpha. I am the alpha. Freaking alpha, man. The the freaking he's a werewolf. He's from the wolf. Man. Come on, you can't get more alpha right, than that. All right, all right. So, 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 I wanted to have someone who was saying, "Are you sure you want to play with me? Come on, come on. Yeah. Do you feel lucky, punk?" <gasps> Good call. Good call. All right. So you got Taylor Lautner and mm-hmm. uh, Colin. Colin Firth yeah. as your, your prof- is Ronnie and Professor. Got it. Okay. Right. I'm going to hit you with my, com- with my combo. Let's go. My combo strong. Okay. I got faith in my combo. Okay. You might be like, huh? But I'm, I'm good. I'm set, okay. son. I'm set. So as my Ronnie, mm-hmm. I'm going with uh, Tanner Bakkenin. Right? He was an actor or not was he is an actor he's a young actor he was on designated survivor but he also plays robbie keen on this the netflix series cobra kai uh. <laughs> that, that's that's my robbie right he's already Go got on. the cobra kai he's already got the, the he understands the dynamics of the high school drama he plays it well uh if you look at him he's got the chisel jaw line he's got the body and if you see a picture of him when he's working out on youtube that boy is mm. pop, 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 mm. Hot, mm-hmm. hot. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's my Rob. That's my you know Ronnie, right? Um, and he's gonna be the body of Firestorm. You put a costume on him, like a, a typical classic costume on him. Oh, CG the like fire hair. Mm-hmm. We good. Yeah. Now for, for the Professor Stein, I'm going with uh Bradley Whitford, the actor. So Bradley Whitford, if you see, he's been a, in many things. If you see him now, oh, he's already okay. got the glasses. He's got mm-hmm. the gray hair. Mm-hmm. He looks like a professor, but he's always got a whimsical smile on his face. Like he could play a villain, he could play uh, a hero, he could play uh, someone that's going to be an instigator. But he, he, but he looks, he looks so smart, witty, very witty. There we go, very, very witty. And I would love to see him play that professor, where he can be at times, you know, just if you put the pairing together, Bradley. Yeah. Uh, would understand a teenage mind, but at the same time, he knows that he has to nurture that teenage mind. So he's not going to be mm-hmm. like a, always talking down to him. You could see, no, no. I feel there'd be a nice relationship where he's like, okay, I understand I was a teenager once myself. Okay, da 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 but you got to kind of grow up a little bit. But I get right. where you're coming from. Ronald, right. let's do this. Okay, Ronald, let's try that. Ron, Ron, Ron. Okay, I've been there. Let's go, man. Okay. Right. But okay. Ron, okay, you want to do this because this guy's been pushing around, Ron? Okay, you know what? For once, I'll turn the other eye, Ron. Just do this, but don't do it so hard. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, that's that's Bradley to, to me. Bradley uh, Whitford. So I'm okay. going with, as I said, Tanner and Bradley. That's my Ron and Professor for Firestorm. Can can I can I make a can I make an interjection or a smiling joke? Sure. Tanner was on my, my one of my one of my short lists. He was on your short list. He was on my short list. That's why I like saying I'm like I'm like thinking. Cobra Kai. That's what you said. Cobra Kai. I said Cobra Kai. That was funny. Yeah. But I was thinking. I was thinking that. I'm like, you know what? And I. And the reason why I. I didn't go to him. And I. And I realized I didn't say it in my little elevator yeah. pitch, pitch. I was actually planning to change it up. Where. That's why. Say so Taylor. Taylor is. Is um. I'm going for someone who was like, mid, mid twenties. So mm-hmm. I wanted to have someone who was a little bit older because I was now thinking, trying to think of the dynamics of trying to make um, a Marty McFly, Doc oh, Brown, okay. yeah, yeah. Of a, course. Rick and, the, a Rick and Morty type of, right. So I was trying to make that type of dynamic. So where would you see, like where were the chance you will see Ronnie would catch up with him? Yes, he's a professor, he's a teacher and everything like that. And I just saying like, if anything, we reverse it. Professor is work. he's out of college. He's at a university. He's at that level, that type of level, working like, and it's funny I have to say this because I've been rewatching Fringe. So if you remember Fringe, I know that's your series. You like that series, right? So if you remember how at least that you know um, Walter Bishop, he was he was a professor, but he was like basically in the base, not in the basement, but he was stuck in a corner in a university, whatever the case be. Only certain people knew that he was there, like he Mm -hmm. was that high intellect that you know whatever case to be. So. For me, Ronnie would be going to high school. Not from high school, he'll be in college. He'll be in university. Make friends with him. Yeah, he's my professor. Whatever the case to be. Yeah, uh, you know, I joke with the professor. He's a funny guy. Whatever the case to be. 
and at least have that type of parity, having that type of connection. So kind of going back from the original, hey, something's happening or a protest, whatever. Or oh, you're going by my professor's building. Oh, you guys trying to break in? No, 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 no. Oh, kind of scenario. And we go like this. So my head was thinking from the college point of view. So I was aging them up slightly. Mm -hmm. So that's why I thought of Tanner for a second. I was like, no, uh, yes, he could work it. But I'm like, no, I need to, I want to have that Rick and Morty, uh, Marty and, and Doc Brown type of relationship. So that means they've, they've been friends at least for one full year. If you're in, you're in college for like four years, at least the first year and a half, two years, he's been, he's been rolling with the professor as a student. Yeah, like, that's I my professor. You. I go to his class. So that's my, that's what my, that was my thought process from approaching that. So I forgot to say that. But when you were bringing Tanner, I'm like, that's the reason why I didn't go to Tanner. I'm like, I didn't say it. Yeah. I'm just See, no, I wanted the young. I wanted that big dynamic. And, and Well, first, I wanted mm -hmm. a big dynamic. And I was having problems. I'll say this. I'll, we'll wrap this up. But I was having problems. Like, okay, well, I want to get someone different. I want to get someone different. Who should I go with? And I got to give it out. I have no credit. I can't take any credit from the picks I even used tonight. Mm. Uh, you know, I know we recorded this at night, but you listen to it when you guys are listening. Oh. But I take no credit for this one. I have to give full credit for the two of this casting to my daughter. So Alyssa turned around and me, she was like, Daddy, what are you doing? I go, Well, we're this is what we're talking about. And she goes, What's going on? I go, I don't know who I want to cast for Firestorm for Ronnie and the professor. And she goes, Oh, oh sorry. And I'm like, You what? You got someone? And she's like, Let me look. And she's going through her phone and da 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 da. And she's like, Hey, you know what? This actor and this actor would be a good pairing. And I'm like, Holy crap. I raised that child right. <laughs> no, but that's it, good parenting it, it, right there, where she was able to pitch it for daddy, you know. Um, and and she came in there and she picked out, yes, for anyone listening, she's 18. My daughter's will be 19, you know, uh, in June, just like me. Uh, and she's the one that came up with Tanner and Bradley to play yeah. Firestorm. So it's not even good me call. that came up with this one. This is full good credit. Call. This is good this call. is on my little mini me. <laughs> My partner in crime. So, you know, shout out to my daughter, Alyssa. There we go. Thank you very much. Daddy loves you. That That's what it comes down to. Okay. Okay. No, but it, it is a good, it is a good pairing. It she is knocked this one. To me, she knocked this one. When she showed me and I was like, wow. Okay. Knocked out of the ballpark. So this was a, an Alyssa special. There we go. Yep. 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 It is what it is. <laughs> got to give dues. We got to give dues. Uh, you know, most of the time I'm doing work this time. It was all her. Right on. Nice. 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 <laughs> Any last nice. notes, Rod? Um, listen, right now, uh Firestorm is a unique character. Um, I will say it this way. Like, you may think having that particular fire having that particular power is redundant and it might be repetitive along the line. I think that the dynamic of him having that power, learning, like we were saying, we want to see we want to see the dynamic role of these two, two separate generations. So it's not even saying that they're a generation like like maybe like ten years apart. Well, I Ooh. was just there not that long ago, so I know how it is. These are like literally like father and son. Like it's like the dynamics. Like again, this yeah. is it's easily it's easily a thirty year difference gap. So mine one one was at Woodstock and one watched Woodstock as a documentary. <laughs> 110 percent so having that type of character down to build on it is great so we can start to learn like you know the responsibility of literally you could say like i said earlier with great power come with, comes comes with great responsibility this is a character who will have to be able to hone himself to restrain because you see in the beginning when he started to realize what he could do yeah he's having fun whatever the case to be but you know that it re it takes restraint to like say I just can't just zap an answer or like every single time. Let me be conscious of what I'm doing. Why am I doing it? Who am I affecting? Who is getting affected as along that line? So I I I will agree that there's layers on this character. We just don't. A lot of people just don't know how much layers you can actually peel away, and the the benefits of having him as an active individual in people's minds. You want the brute force of someone, you you got it. You want the wit, you want the the co comedic uh, timing and, and properties and stuff like that. You got it from here. You want the wisdom. Again, he's a smaller kind of compacted version of Shazam because he has the wisdom of Solomon per se. Yes. You know what I mean. 
Yeah. He has the ability and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're getting a nice, unorthodox, wrapped up present presented to you, and you're realizing, wow, there's stuff I can do with this guy. It's, it's, I think it's time, like you said, to, to bring him out to, to the world. Bring him out, bring him out, bring him out. Yeah. Hard to talk with a viral in your mouth. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, I'm good. All right. So, yeah, I hear you. Uh, I agree. As I said, uh, as I said, one was at Woodstock, one was reading about Woodstock. Got it. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This has mm. been another exciting episode of the Iconist Podcast. Shout out to my daughter for helping daddy plug all these ones in because uh, daddy was brain dead today. And on that world, because I trade, I, re- I raised her right. Uh, and keep in mind on that on that note, this whole world started with a pencil, a piece of paper, and lots of imagination. Keep on dreaming. We're out. Oh, yeah. All right, there's DJ. It's 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 DJ Rod Storm. Storm. Shout out to DJ Storm in Montreal. Yeah, I was about to say no. <laughs> Storm be like. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. We good. We good. We good. We good. Nice. Don't worry. There's no more. We're all.